Oh. Now this is where I wanted you to hear. As soon as we step outside the door, guess what? I found seven men standing there waiting for me. And what were they carrying on their hands? Pangas. Good evening everybody and uh, I hope you're doing well. It's night while I'm shooting this video. It's around, oh, it's almost midnight. I wonder what time I'll sleep, but I'm so excited to uh, shoot this video. Being the very first time I'm shooting this kind of a video, I hope you're going to just be able to engage and to, you know, uh, be able to connect in such a special way. I'm going to talk uh, both in English and Swahili so that uh, we'll be able to communicate effectively to everybody who will be interacting with this video. Uh, just to begin by is to introduce myself. My name is Cornell and I'm so excited to be speaking to us, people who love God, uh, just to say that I'm born again and Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. Right, today I want to share with you a story. Uh, a story that uh, is so close to my heart. I share it quite a while, uh, a number of times with people uh, because it's it's one beautiful story that I doubt if I'll ever forget. This is one story that, you know, uh, it makes me sad sometimes, but uh, even in the sadness I find a lot of joy. Uh, because something special happened on this particular day and uh, feel free to also share with us what you you have experienced in the course of life uh, about the same topic if you have now this this is a story of uh, two young people two young boys uh, i'm going to give them pseudonyms one was called eric and the other one was called sam Eric and Sam uh, could probably be around, uh, Eric was around 7 years old, Sam was around 10 years old. And uh, one particular day as I was coming from church, late in the evening, uh, I was in church uh, together with my band, we, we enjoyed that evening, we played a lot of music, you know, just vibing, uh, you know, I remember we had four uh, instrumentalist that day. We had a bassist, I was on the piano, there was a drumist and there was a keyboardist. Are you sorry? Uh, there was a, what was there? I can't remember. An acoustic, acoustic guitar. We vibed with these people and at around 9 p.m. in the night we separated and we were on our way home. Now on our way home, uh, what happened? I met with these two young boys, Eric and Sam. And Eric and Sam stopped me. Wakanembia, hey, bro, atuko poa, tunombo tusaidie. And they had a lot of confidence, you know, stopping me and asking me to help them. They told me to give them uh, 10 shillings if I had. Yeah, and uh, I was so worried. Why, why should children of this age, 7 and 10 years old, stop me in at night asking me for money? And... Uh, Instead of just giving them money, I decided to begin having conversations with them. And I started asking them questions. I asked Sam and Eric, where do you come from? And they told me they, they were from a slum, which was not very far from where I was. This place was in Buruburu. For those who know where Buruburu is in Islands, right? So I asked them why they were there at such a time. In, it was late. Children are supposed to be in the house, either sleeping, and uh, that was on a was it on a on a Thursday or a Saturday? I can't remember. I don't have the details. It's been some time back. Yeah. So <clears throat> I told them they were supposed to be asleep. Why were they out so late in the night? And uh, the response they gave me uh, made me to want to hear more. This is what they told me. They told me, you know what, if we sleep tonight, if we sleep by now, our families might not feed. Now, take a post there and help me understand this. How can families not feed if children age 7 and 10 
sleep at such an hour. That kept me asking myself, Kwani ni nini? What's happening? What's not happening? Yeah, where are we going wrong? Is there a mistake we are making? Or it's just by nature that this is how God intended things to happen. And so this is what happened. I decided to interrogate a bit further and I asked Sir Eric and Sam, so what do you mean? Why do you say that if you went to sleep, your families might never feed? And they started sharing with me sad stories and they shared with me, telling me that the both of them, the dads were drunkards, you know, wazazi wanalewa kulewa, yani. And, and people, we need to talk about that again. I think that's also a story that, um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, so they say their parents, the, the dads were drunkards. And uh, the, uh, specifically for Eric, Eric had the mom, but the mom was breastfeeding. They had a little baby who had just been born. And uh, Eric also had a big brother who was a makanga. A makanga is a tout, all right? So he was uh, always on the road, but when he gets his money, it rarely gets home. So what does it mean? Eric, who is 10 years old, is the one who most of the time fends for the family. So I was not convinced, but deep in my heart, I felt I needed to do something for these children. So what did I do? I took them home to my place. I took them home to my place and uh, my family, I, I have such a wonderful father. My dad is a, a lover of people and uh, my siblings back then were very young so they wouldn't understand why I brought children who was dirty, children who were unkempt. They, they just stood there looking at me and they couldn't say anything. I'm the firstborn anyway. Uh, so when I bring people at home, nobody will really question. And my dad also, me and my dad, we are buddies, we talk. So my daddy uh, automatically understood there was a mission that I was on to. And so there was nothing to discuss. So I, get, I got home together with Eric and Sam and uh, I organized for them to take a shower and then we I made them remove the clothes they were putting on and I took my younger, young, younger brother's clothes and I gave them to put them on and all of a sudden they were looking great, they were shy. But you could tell that they were shy, yeah, they, would, they were not understanding uh, what was really happening. This was a gesture probably that was also warming their hearts. Yeah, but that's what we did. So, took our party and then we prepared food and we gave them food to eat. After that, this was the special part. I decided to now take them home. Now that's almost around 11 p.m. Yeah, I said I'll, I'll have to take them home because it's very unsafe for such children to walk alone. So we started our journey all the way from uh, Buruburu to, to Kiambio. Kiambio is the slum I was talking about. So when we got to Kiambio, uh, Eric and Sam led me to their home. Of course, remember while we left uh, my place, we also bought a few things, uh, milk and sugar and bread, and I carried them along, and we took them to their home. So when we got uh, to where they called home, uh, I knew it was a slum, so I was expecting anything, but what I saw is not really what I was imagining. You know, you would think of uh, these people living in mud houses or it's just a shanty, but probably in your mind you think inside there are probably chairs, there are, it looks a bit decent. Now that's what I was imagining. When I got there, I was surprised. Now this is what I met. I knocked the door and I heard a voice uh, answering, Welcome! And then we opened the door and got in. It was dark. I couldn't see anything. And then with the, after uh, a few seconds, mtu akawasha light. Yeah, akawasha, you know, ile korobo, ile, ile taya, ya kweka mafuta, jioni unatumwa mafuta, unaenda unaleta alafu inawashwa. So that's what they they were using. Uh, they, they, the light, the mother lighted the lamp. 
And then all of a sudden I could now see everything clearly. And I was ushered to have a seat. I tried looking where to sit and I couldn't find. There was no chair. But guess what? These people have a chair and this is how they ushered their guests and they were so happy to receive me. They told me please sit down. They had three rocks and these three rocks had cartons on top and that's what people would sit on. So I sat on the rocks, on, on the carton and uh, uh, across, across uh, the other side where the mom was seated, it was on a mattress and uh, it had a, a blue mosquito net. Uh, the, the mosquito net had big holes. You know, hata na juli zambono na tume mosquito net mzuri kama ilakini na mashimu. Does it really help, you know? But anyway, those, those were questions that I was asking myself silently. And then uh, we started having conversations with uh, the mom to Eric and uh, the mom told me uh, about his fam her family. Uh, the dad was a, a drunkard who lives in the house in the morning and you only expect to see him very late in the night while drunk. Uh, the dad was, uh, wasn't going to come home with any money because he doesn't work. The little vibaruas that he does uh, only affords to pay for his alcohol, but it's not enough to feed the family. And so the mom sends Eric, and Eric accompanies himself together with Sam, who is a neighbor, and they go out to look for money to come and support the family. The mom had a two weeks old baby, so she is not in a position to get out. Uh, to go home, uh, to go, I mean, uh, and fend for the family. But I need to also tell you something, a question that I asked Eric and Sam before I came with them, you know. They were so dirty. I'm sorry, I asked Eric and Sam, when's the last time you took a shower? Mulio galini musho. And the response, <laughs> the responses were, why, okay, were not pleasing. So both of them told me, it had taken them a month since the last time they took a shower. And I asked them, why? Mbona one month? I'm pendi maji. And they said, no, we would love to really take a shower. But where we come from in Kambio, we don't have water. We don't have like tap water. Tap water. But if it's available, then it's for sale. You need to go with a jerry can and then you buy it. And uh, a jerry can costs around 10 shillings or 20 shillings. Now that's the money they get while moving around uh, when they ask people to support them. So they don't, uh, they're not able to afford so much to be able to buy water to take a shower. At the same time, they need to get water to take home so that they may use it to drink and cook. Now, where are priorities here? Just ask yourself, will you get water to take a shower or will you get water to drink? <laughs> so, yeah. So that was uh, quite a difficult situation to be in. And actually, that's the reason why I took them home. Remember I told you I took them to my place to go and take a shower? That was actually the reason. So uh, they were able to now at least take a shower on that particular day. And then, uh, yeah, that's how then we headed out to their place to also go and confirm that they were not lying to me. They were telling me the truth. So to come na mama, mama can a story. I can the firstborn son who works in a matatu is a tout, and uh, he also is just a drunkard like the the dad. The dad is super, you know, is drinking and drinking and drinking, and that family was in a mess. Yeah, they were in such a difficult place. I look at the mom and it was. Not pleasing. Anyway, I took some time to just uh, have conversations with her, and when we were done, we prayed. We we committed the family into the hands of God, and I gave the mom a little shopping that I came with, and uh, I told Eric, "Now you can escort me out. Then you can get back to your family." And then, as soon as we stepped outside the door, now this is where I wanted you to hear. As soon as we stepped outside the door, guess what? I found seven men standing there waiting for me. And what were they carrying on their hands? Pangas. 
they were carrying pangas in their hands and I prayed to God and I said God <laughs> if this is the last day for your son please receive me here I come I, I mean I, I was so helpless they were huge people okay and they looked like they were, some of them are not sober yeah so I step out and the first thing they uh, one of them grabbed my neck all right and the other one told me sasa wewe ndio unakuja kuangalia mabibi za watu yeah unakuja kuangalia mabibi za watu wakati mabwana zao hawako you are the one who comes to look at people's wives when their husbands are not around yeah and because of that we are here to deal with you today and I told them no 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 that's not right i'm 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 not that kind of a person I just came here because of Eric and Sam who I met with and they told me about their situation at home and uh, I've even gone with them to my place and you know we are uh, I told them the whole story of course that's one thing that I thank God for that God was able to control them to give them peace to just listen to me I wonder if they were you know the way a mob operates where one person is rowdy and uh, they just want to push you around I thank God that that didn't happen so they come down they listened to my story and then they turned to Eric and Sam and they asked them Eric is that true did this man take you to their place and they said yes he took he took us to his place and we took a shower he gave us clothes and they could actually see that Eric and Sam were looking different not like the way they always look like and they also confirmed that I had come with some shopping which I had bought for the family Now those people turned to me and said kijana you know those days I was a bit young I didn't have this gray hair they told me kijana umebarikiwa you are such a blessing thank you thank you for doing such a thing for this family they are struggling we are all struggling but they are at a difficult place and people like you are very rare thank you for doing what you did people the men with panga all of a sudden it became it became a fellowship and i also started encouraging them I told them put your pangas down they're scaring me <laughs> you know they put their pangas down and we started having conversations and we also prayed again after the end of our conversations and eric and sam became friends i kept in touch with eric and sam for some time they started coming to my church i never told my church members about it they would come on sundays i would interact with them they would get into the sunday school uh, uh you know team and uh, they would get uh, served and after that i would give them a few uh, coins here and there and they would go home and we became very tight but at some point uh, we lost contact but i pray that wherever eric and sam are that the lord is leading their path that the lord is shining his light upon the, uh, their paths I pray that Rere and Sam will not live that kind of a life forever. I pray that at some point God is going to use them to be a testimony to their generation. And so I've told you this story because I I find such people, many of them uh, around the town and everywhere uh, who come and they ask to support and sometimes I sit back and ask myself is this genuine? But then I realize you know what? It's not in my place to say if it's genuine or not. I am not sure. What if I deny them and then uh, something uh, probably that was the only meal that they had left if I gave it to them. I mean, I don't know. And I don't want to explain much. I just want to tell you that for me how I deal with it is when I find such people and I have I always don't assume them. I want to hear from you. What do you do? and what does god want us to do is it wrong to give these people and uh, push them as, uh, uh, away and say these people are lazy they don't want to work these people are pretenders they have a lot of money because they beg every day and they don't do anything with it they they come here sit here every day and this is what they do what does the word of god say about it and i think the next uh, video that we are going to record uh, we are going to be able to ask ourselves what is it that we we should do differently when dealing with such people yeah and uh, i have a story a personal story which is involving me uh, probably at some point uh, i'll be able to tell you about it and it will also be able to help us understand 
where I am coming from, why I think I have a soft spot for these people, why I think I pray for these people like daily I want to pray for the needy, I want to pray for the widows and the widowers. Maybe we can have a conversation. Just tell me at the chat uh, uh, space and let me understand how you deal with such cases. Have you ever experienced such children? And if you did, how did you deal with it? Otherwise, thank you, people. Thank you so much for uh, following and uh, just listening to my story. And I pray that uh, God is also going to speak to us and uh, tell us what to do when such cases present themselves to us. Otherwise, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you next time. May God bless you. And I don't know, if you've never subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm just beginning. Help me. Help me be able to uh, share my stories even more with uh, more people. And uh, you included so that when I share such videos, you'll, YouTube will, will, will always notify you and let you know that I've posted something. Otherwise, thank you so much. I love you and the Lord loves you more.